I do too. Hello, hello. Yes, that is a beautiful Christmas setting. Wow, I need some more light in here. Um, that didn't make much of a difference, but it did make some. Hey, you guys, this is um, Lansing. I'm trying to get my little stuff together. It's kind of dark. That's perfect. That's much better. I'm going to keep you around. You're good to me. Um, I wanted to uh, give everybody a couple seconds to pop on. Hey, Anna, God bless you. Hey, Verdis, God bless you. want to talk to you guys real quick about something that is sort of pressing in my spirit. want to bring awareness. Hey, Melissa, God bless you. Hey, Eric, son, how are you? God bless you. Um, want to bring some awareness to some things. Wow, that Christmas setting is, is really awesome. Um, the display of Christmas lights that we're passing by. Um, listen, you guys, I wanted to talk a little bit. Um, hey, Katina, God bless you. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this thing with these sin carriers, these willful sin carriers. You could be um, on a ministry team. You could be in a church. If you wear the title Christian, but you are willfully indulging in sin, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about it because it's very much just like um, herpes in the natural. Hey, Keisha. Hey, Lisa. I see y'all keep coming in. Hey, Prophetess Tab. God bless you. Like this. Share this. God bless you guys. Um, hey, Mary King. God bless you. Like it. Share it. Whatever comments or feedback. Hey, Prophetess Selena. God bless you. Whatever feedback you have or whatever comments you have, I welcome them. Hey, Priscilla Nelson. So, so listen, um, for those who are not really educated, and I've never had herpes, thank God, um, but I know several people who do. Thanks for sharing the video. Thank you guys. Like it, share it, because I want to bring a little bit of awareness without condemnation, without judgment, without scrutiny. Um, but it's real, 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 real. Oh, he loved my real hair. Yeah, my husband, he likes the, he loves the color. Simone Avery did it. Um, go on her Facebook page. She is really, really good with color, natural hair. She grew my hair. Marsha um, Cheney grew it, and then it got cut off. You know, I didn't take care of it, and then Simone Avery grew it all the way back. Hey, Christopher. Hey, Juana. God bless you. Um, and so, yeah, thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing. Please be sure to not just like and share. Thanks for the hearts. But um, that's not what my focus is. Um, Leona, God bless you. Thanks. Listen, when you are a part of a ministry, you are a part of a movement. When, when God assigns you to a ministry, he assigns you to the vision of that house. He assigns you to the work that he has assigned and prescribed for it. Um, with that vision that he's given the visionary for that house and so everything that is a part of that movement has to be in alignment and in sync together with one accord for things to go smoothly go back to Uzzah when um, they were transporting the ark of the covenant and he did not um he was trying to do a good thing but he was instructed not to touch it when you are a part of a ministry team or a part of a ministry, especially if you are in servanthood, I mean, if you're serving as a leader, not senior leadership, but you assist leadership on some level, or you have been entrusted by God to lead a ministry under someone else's covering, your hands have to be clean. Here's why. Your spirit is much like your blood in your flesh. And it, anytime your spirit becomes corrupted, it manifests in your flesh. Anytime your blood co becomes corrupted, it also corrupts everybody that that it comes in contact with herpes is the same way it and so it may not cause death but there's no cure for it do you understand what i'm saying to you and so you have breakouts people that have herpes whether it be genital or oral different types of herpes they experience these breakouts from time to time so they'll go long periods of time where they don't have any breakouts and there's no visible sign that herpes exists on the inside of them and then out of nowhere you see cold sores and huge bumps and boils and cysts and different things begin to manifest their skin you know uh, breaks out and so i want you to understand that people see you when you are in what you perceive to be secret sin it's just like herpes they may not be able to look at you all the time and tell but 
there are certain times that the sin is going to cause a breakout in your spirit and it becomes visible and apparent to anybody who has an eye or has the ability to discern. And the ones that it affects directly first are the ones who are called to be a part of the same movement that, or the same vision or the same house, the same ministry that God has stationed you in. The second group of people that are impacted are the ones in your family, in your home. The last group of individuals are the ones that you all are assigned to reach or teach. Here's how the enemy works. He does not um, have any type of mercy or grace or compassion. There is no cure for herpes. Once you get herpes, you're basically marked for life. Once you choose to indulge in certain sins, you are marked for life. And, and let me just be very specific. Sexual sin is what I'm talking about. When you get chlamydia and things like that, they those things cause scar tissue on the inside of you that's where ectopic pregnancies come from some of it is from surgical issues but you have scar tissue on the inside of your spirit that nobody can see that is attached to you permanently that causes your body to keep aborting what God deposits on the inside of you and is desiring to birth in the earth through you and so tainted hands begin to cripple an entire movement because every time the father impregnates abortion or miscarriage happens because there is secret sin in the camp. And so I need for you to rid yourself now and understand that you are valuable. You don't have to be the pastor. You don't have to be the apostle. You don't have to be an armor bearer or anything of the sort. If you are an usher, if you are a greeter, if you cut the grass, if you clean the bathrooms, if you are working in children's ministry, whatever it is, if you just come to church every Sunday and God has anointed you to sow sacrificial financial seeds to help finance the vision, your role is equally as important as the pastor or the apostle or the prophet or whoever is in your senior leadership. And when you are out of position and when your hands are tarnished or stained, so is the work, so is the ministry. And, so, and the, the, the assignment becomes hindered. Another connection between herpes is you have to exchange body fluids. That simply means when you lay down with the enemy and you open yourself up in a vulnerable way that a man and a woman should only be open and exposed to each other in the ministry of marriage in a sexual way, when you give unauthorized access to those arenas, you welcome in unauthorized things and they damage you mentally. That's where demonic soul ties, the easiest soul ties to establish are sexual soul ties. And so I want you guys to understand that the enemy is not coincidentally or accidentally luring you into this sexual sin. It's not a coincidence that you went six months, eight months, ten months, whatever, two years, five years, seven years, whatever, and then all of a sudden you fell back into it. I want you to look at the bigger picture. The reason the enemy is sabotaging you and crippling your mindset and weakening you in the area of your flesh and attacking you in the areas where you're vulnerable is because you have been called to be a pillar in a vision. You have been called to be a pillar in a movement that's been assigned and established in the earth by God. And so the enemy is trying to corrupt God's foundation by bringing corruption into the body through you. It is a, is a it, and sexual sin is communicable. Sexual sin, those spirits transfer so quickly onto people who have been fasting. You can be fasting, you can be praying, and you can be really focused, spending time in your word, doing what you need to do. But when you come into covenant connection with somebody who has unclean hands and is choosing to willfully remain in it. That's when the invitation is extended for the unclean spirit to rule. See, when you're trying to, when you're going through the process of being delivered, there's no invitation. You're constantly in eviction mode, evicting the unclean spirit, evicting the emotion, arresting the thoughts, you know, but when you are not able to crucify your flesh, ha, huh, there's the answer. When you choose to not crucify your flesh, when you choose to self-gratify, the enemy advances in the kingdom of God. The enemy advances because one by one, he takes out everybody who is connected to you. He takes out everybody who is relying on you. He takes out those that are that are depending on you because they no longer have you as a lifeline. Unfortunately, Jesus is no longer walking on the earth. All of the work that he's doing in the earth is being done through us. We are his epistles. He chose us for it. He anointed us for it. He gave us specific and very direct instructions in his word. You've got to choose to refuse to abuse what Christ has trusted you with. Choose to refuse to abuse what the Father has entrusted you with. Know ye not that your body is a temple of God. I don't care how good the money is or how good the sex is. We all love to be pleasured. The word of God clearly declares that there are pleasurable things in sin, but there's also herpes. 
HIV, AIDS, syphilis, gonorrhea, chlamydia. There are all these other things that cause miscarriages in those uh, ignorantly. I have gone through so many mistakes and made so many mistakes when I was younger and I've still gone through my life paying for them years and years later. You don't have to settle. If the person really has your best interest at heart, you're lonely, you need companionship, you desire that love, you just want someone to talk to or spend time with, somebody who gets you, seek God relentlessly and uncompromisingly and trust him through the process. I'll say this and then I'll go because I didn't want to stay on this um, topic or stay on this live long. I need for you to all understand. Hear me, everybody that's going through this because some, you know, resort to masturbation and some, you know, self-pleasure. That is still a sin that invites the spirit of sabotage to come in and tear down everything that God is building and establishing in the ministry that he has assigned you to because they unknowingly are open. You've got to consider this. When people are relaxed around you and they trust you, of course, they believe that you have their best interest at heart. They don't view you as a carrier. Come on, somebody. Sin carriers are just like AIDS, HIV, or herpes carriers. Th these people who have sex, they're, they're carriers, and they don't tell the person that they're, the unsuspected person that they're having unprotected sex with, that they're a carrier. That is what you do when you go and indulge in sexual sin and come into the house of God as if you have not done that. You don't repent to God privately. You don't repent to God publicly. And you try to put your hands to the plow to do a holy work when you are not holy. It's a spiritual work that divides, that requires divine order. And you have unclean hands that are going to defile that which the Father has ordained or anointed. And so I'm simply saying repent. I'm not judging. I'm not trying trying to condemn. I'm not trying to tear anybody down. I'm simply saying repent. Excuse me one second. I'm simply saying repent and ask God to forgive you. And you have to confess, find an, a, an accountability partner within the ministry that you can trust and confess to them. So number one, they know how to cover you and cover the others in prayer because I've seen, you know, where sin great, the grace of God will abide much more where your sin is if you yield it over to him. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. However, you've got to trust the Father and trust his processes. The word is not, God is not a man that he should lie. His processes work. He, cre he created us. So he knows and understands every emotion, every thought, every weakness, every need, every desire. God placed a desire for sex and companionship inside you and inside me. But it's up to us to utilize it the way that he intended. Holy matrimony, love between a man born a woman, I mean a, a man, a male born male, a husband born male, and a wife born female. That's who God designed sex to take place between as far as the human race goes. And so we've got to choose to do it the way the Father prescribed so that we can have peace and have joy and have an abundant, prosperous life. I want to bring enlightenment or illumination. I, I mean, I want you to think about this because I'm not really deep, so let me move away from those big words. It's really kind of this simple. When you connect with people and you partner with them and they depend on you as a team member, whether it be in the church, whether it be in the marriage, whether it be in the workplace, they're depending on you to do your part. And doing your part means protecting yourself and protecting them from anything unclean that can be avoided. It's we all Romans 3:23 says for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. So I'm not by any means saying you're not human and you don't make mistakes. I'm not at all saying that things don't happen and things don't come up. What I am saying is you you are you are corrupting and tarnishing and tainting innocent people with your self-gratification and your selfishness, selfishness. And so we've got to look at the big picture and look at the what the father planned and what his desire and what his goal is. We've got to be mindful of the fact that our actions don't only impact us, but they impact everyone that we're connected to. And here's the third piece. You're having sex and committing all of these sins. Um right now but it's a credit card bill and the payment is going to be due now i don't know if you have a visa american express discover or a mastercard or but i know american express and that's how we live our life with american express we can do as much as we want we can charge as much as we want but we have to make that payment in full 
And some of us are sitting that way. And then some of us, thanks for liking, thanks for sharing the video. Some of us are living that way. And then here are the others. We charge $1,000 worth of sin and then we do $200 worth of repentance. We just put a payment arrangement on it. Tomorrow's not promised to any man. We're going to have to go through the process of being totally delivered and purged. And you cannot coddle people who are willfully cooperating with the enemy's plan to sabotage what the Father wants to do in the earth through you. And so we've got to confront it. We've got to do it in love. We've got to make leave room for repentance and for change and for growth. And, you know, typically there is an inner healing issue. Typically, the reason why that the, the things are happening the way they're happening and these um, sin carriers, these these people in the kingdom are carrying this sin is because they have inner healing. They have voids that they've not gone through the process of getting filled. They have not identified where their trauma or where their disappointment or they haven't resolved their rejection issues. They have, you know, they don't they've never experienced unconditional love or they've given their love to all the they have no more love to give because they've wasted all of it on people who were unloving and didn't reciprocate towards them. All of that is irrelevant at this point. The vision is greater than anything that you're dealing with on a personal level. Do not continue to be a carrier and contaminate or infiltrate and come in and sabotage unknowing people who trusted you. They got in bed with you, trusting you, and you knew you had herpes. You knew you had HIV. You knew you had AIDS. You didn't tell them and you didn't care enough to protect them and the reason you didn't want to protect them is because you weren't wise enough to protect yourself there has to be a breaking on the inside of you of your spirit you have to choose to refuse to abuse the temple and the trust that God has given you here's the last thing that I'm going to say about this we've got to go through a process of vomiting up and releasing and letting go of everything in us that is defiled nobody knows how tainted and tarnished and damaged you are internally like you do you know where your weaknesses are stop setting yourself up to fail over and over again it's time that we grow up that we mature truly in the things of God we begin to focus more on crucifying our flesh and fulfilling the the, uh, the assignment that the father has prescribed stop being a herpes or an HIV or an AIDS carrier in the spirit stop coming in and riddling an entire ministry with your mess it's okay to come in sick but it's not okay to not seek a cure and it's not okay to continue to indulge and contaminate others. You are willfully choosing to expose other people to your communicable sin when you don't repent, when you keep indulging, when you don't confess. It's that simple. You're hindering the advancement of the vision and leaving the ministry is not the option and it shouldn't be a choice. Leaving the sin. Don't let go of the assignment. Don't let go of the ministry. Don't let go of the partnership and the covenant connection. Let go of the sin. Let go of the thing that's pulling you further and further outside of the will of God so that the Father can be glorified, so that you can rise up and testify and help the Father and be used by God to get others delivered and set free. I hope this helped. I love you guys. Until next time, keep it hashtag boom.